Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So Thaumaturge had a few adjustments recently, reducing its damage effectiveness by a bit, particularly the reduction or the removal of 10% free critical severity. Many of you are struggling with your builds and wondering what you should be doing to optimize to get all of your stats maxed out. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. First of all, how to play Thaumaturge for single target and multi-target, what power setups you want to be using for those, and then moving on to all the gear and items that make up your character and put it all together. We'll have timestamps on the play bar below. Now, as you can see with this build, you'll be getting all those 90%, and so you can maximize your damage potential. This is using an active striker companion, the three good damage companions here, and keep in mind, this is all by yourself. You do not need a full team to achieve this. But when you do go in a group, particularly in end game, you will want to optimize in order to make use of all of these other buffs you can obtain to your stats, leading you to be able to use damage bonuses elsewhere. And we'll cover that in a later section. There is also a build document linked below with all the contents there, what the build's about. You have all the stats, the gear, everything here that you should need in order to set up the build for yourself. So now we move to our powers. And first of all, we're going to go single target damage. So this is where you want to maximize your damage output against a boss. This is generally the most important parts of Neverwinter where you want to maximize your damage. So here you want to have a setup that's going to allow you to deal as much damage as possible. However, we're, we're choosing a few things here that allow us to have a little bit of flexibility, particularly when you're in mixed fights where you do have some enemies coming into the fight. So having something like this feature is very beneficial there. Same with relative haste. It's a very unnoticeable effect. And so you generally want smoldering recovery, particularly when going into mixed fights. Now, I have covered a lot of different variations you can use on Thaumaturge. The arcanist ones are thrown in here as well, but you can see all the different setups and kind of how they rank with each other. The top performing setup is where you're min-maxing everything, but it's a little bit more tricky to play. Basically, you want to have your Scorching Burst to put Smolder on the target, and then you would have here Orb of Imposition instead of Critical Conflagration, because without Scorching Burst, you would have no way to trigger Smolder on your target, and you'd miss a lot of damage like that. So as a newer player, and just to be more friendly and have an easier time, it can just be very simple to go with Critical Conflagration. But if you want to squeeze out the maximum amount of damage, as you see by this chart, you need to be having that Orb of M position with that Scorching Burst just to trigger the smolder, but then you ideally want to switch back after the target has smolder over to, let's say, magic missile and then attack. So it will work something like this. You're going into your fight, you put your uh, scorching burst on the enemy, and then so long as you attack that enemy, you'll see they have that smolder icon right there, and then you can switch this over to magic missile. So as long as you continually attack your target, they'll always have the smolder and take that damage over time. The problem is when the enemy, let's say, disappears to do a mechanic and then comes back, then all their buffs are reset. and You can't do anything to put smolder on them until you switch back to, say, Scorching Burst. And you might end up with this timer if you didn't do it properly. And so it can just be a lot easier to keep that class feature and lose, yes, a little bit of damage. Again... All the details are here and I covered in my recent video with single target damage, particularly comparing versus Arcanist. But yes, the setup, powers, features, rotations, the basics of that is here. So now we jump to our single target damage rotation, how to maximize that damage against the bosses. Well, if you're in endgame, you're going to be going with an artifact call. You can do this by yourself as well. So first of all, make sure you've positioned correctly. So you have this purple arc, you have combat advantage against your target. Then initially try get five arcane stacks with magic missile. So that's just a few seconds at the very beginning. And then you're probably going to go artifact call. So we're going to go here 
Artifact, Icy Rays, Shield Strike, Repel, Entangling Force, Ice Knife, Daily Power, or Mount Power, Golden Touch, Repel, Chill Strike, and Icy Rays, along with Entangling there. You should have enough time to get two Icy Rays within an artifact call. That is if you have two Tactician Mount Insignia bonuses right here. If you don't have two of them and just one of them, you may want to just use Icy Rays before you use your daily power as it is. Yes, your hardest hitting encounter power. We are trying to get it twice within the artifact call. That's why I'm using it at the beginning because if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to get it in twice. Otherwise, if you're not having an artifact call, you're just using your encounter powers when they're off cooldown in whatever order. It doesn't generally matter. Just don't save onto them. Use them as soon as they're off cooldown. Now, you will want to use one magic missile attack between the cooldown of Repel, and that should generally allow you to sustain these five arcane stacks. Now, once you get to the artifact call again, you need to save your encounter powers so that you have them all off cooldown for that artifact call. So again, you're going your artifact, icy rays, shield strike, repel, dangling force, daily power, mount power, repel, you out bills, chill strike, icy rays, entangling force, and that's it. If you want more details on the single target rotation, you can check this video out here where I compare Thaumaturge and Arcanist and do show the, the top performing single target rotations for there. Now we go to multi target. The setup I like to use and I found that works the best is this right here. Using your chilling cloud. You can have Scorching Burst, but I generally don't use it unless you're setting up for some ads that are going to spawn it in. You know when you can have that area held there. Otherwise, it's just not a big deal. You don't need the Smolder. You're running with this feature. In Counter Powers, you want Icy Terrain. Just stick it as a normal spell. Chill Strike, you want on Spell Mastery to make it an area of effect attack. You want to have Conduit of Ice and Fireball. I have tested Fanning the Flame, and it just underperforms compared to any of these other options. For the daily powers, it's your choice generally between Furious Simulation and Ice Storm. Ice Storm will output more damage, but it doesn't have the group up effect that Furious Simulation has. So just mess around between the two depending on the content and what you feel works better for you. Class Features, Critical Conflagration, and Combustive Action. This one in particular is very good to get your action points. Now, if you have nimble fingers and want to switch to frost wave every time you've got your daily power full, you can do so and then switch back to combustive action afterwards. I just don't, generally don't bother with it. Feats, you definitely want this setup right here. Now we jump to a bit of a representation of how to use those abilities in combat. Well, the first thing you'll want to do is get your icy terrain on the ground. So we go here, they're going to jump me. We stick icy terrain down. Minotaur is going to help a lot to CC them a bit and then just get your abilities out. I generally am going with like after the icy terrain, fireball and chill strike if they're grouped up. If they're not yet grouped up or you want to start the fight as well and there's one tanky enemy, you can go and put like conduit of ice on them. Dodge here, stick the icy terrain down where the fight's going to be. Stick that fireball, chill strike on the group and then we can dodge out of there. And then the guy gets frozen because he was on top of my icy terrain, which is really good. Get combat advantage here with our companion and everything instead. In terms of using our daily power, again, we can go here, stick the conduit on that guy, dodge over here, stick the icy terrain down, use the furious emulation on the opposite side of our companion, who now moved to us, which meant we had combat advantage with all that damage. And again, everything's dead so quick. You have some very good air of effect damage on wizard again we can go to this group they're going to jump on me we can stick conduit of ice on there and then put the ice storm down icy terrain put the fireball chill strike and then some at wills we can also use our mount power and everything's dead and yeah it's pretty smooth this is again a five man skirmish, this content. The enemies do have a bit of hit points, but in the end of the day, if you're chasing top of the pin giver, it can be who gets to the ad group first and puts down their abilities first. There we go, just use those abilities. 
And yeah, everything's dead. Watch out for the next scoop who's coming in. We have powers on cooldown here. Let's dodge. Try like dodge to the opposite side of enemies from our companion. So we get combat advantage on them. That's them dead. And again, like this group, we can put the conduit, dodge, put the icy terrain, put our daily power, fury simulation, and that chips them down a lot. And there we go. Wizard performs very well in multi-target. There's no excuse to perform poorly at all. You're one of the top classes with multi-target damage. Yes, even though Arcane Singularity got pretty gutted. Now, in terms of stats and priority, well, if you aren't getting them all to 90%, like we are within this build when in combat, then you will be wanting to focus first on your power, then combat advantage, then crit severity, then crit strike, and then accuracy. Outside of that, you do want to prioritize getting some damage buffs, like particularly mints, never into an item materi, very good. And there's some gear bonus as well, particularly if you get your stats maxed out. From there, we go to race and ability scores. For this build, I'm using the Wood Elf. It fits the best with that 5% crit strike. In terms of ability scores, we have intelligence, a little bit of dexterity, and charisma. The dexterity, you will balance based on your crit severity. If you're using the perfect weapons here, you can leave it at that 85% and then stick the rest in charisma. But now we move to our gear. And this is all the stuff we have. Just keep in mind there are alternatives you can use, but you're basically using the stuff that would give you the most amount of stats. That's pretty much best in slot right here. Now you can see where that all comes from in my document. It's all listed right there. Again, this is module 27 and yeah, this is what I would deem as best in slot, at least to get the stats to 90%. Now, outside of that, once you do get stats to 90%, you will have group bonuses and you can switch some gear pieces like damage weapons, damage boosts, damage shirt, damage rings, depending on the content. Like you might want to have Lothian Abrasion, or Star Weaved Slippers, or Solarum Weapons. Those are all feasible and still get 90% stats while within an optimized group where you get all of these boosts to those stats. You just have to move some things around and get alternative gear pieces, which we'll discuss in its own section in Gear Optimization. So quickly in terms of those modifications, armor kits and jewels, you can see we have a crit strike, a crit strike, crit strike, and a crit severity. And then it's just combat advantage in the neck, rings, and the waist. Moving to our enchantments and artifacts. Well, the main important ones here is offense. And for this build, it's one garnet and three cobalts. I will recommend in defense to just have some ones that are spare, like some citrines, some jades, and maybe an amethyst in order to be able to mix and match depending on what gear we might get down the road to be able to switch things around for example we might get a new ring that instead of having accuracy has let's say critical severity then i might want to switch my critical severity enchantments over to citrines that would give accuracy so on and so forth i have a devil's precision and a rage of flames rage of flames you'll switch over to damage bonuses ones like demon slayers dragon slayers depending on what content you're in you want to have a lightning flash here for the stats a recharge speed bonus one here but you can run with action point bonus when in multi-target or movement speed for the artifacts, you want to have the 1,500 item level. That's generally the most important. And then you can get ones with stats. So like these have some decent stats, the crystal and the wand of domination. We could also have here Marco's mystic marker as well. That'll fit. You just need to play around with your stats a little bit. For the primary, you will want one to support the team with artifact calls. And so there is a list that looks like this, where you have all of those like 19 okay different ones. You will want to have a few to be able to fit in groups. Now we jump to our companions. Now as your summoned companion for multi-target, I prefer the Minotaur over anything super good you can summon it and have it use its group up effect tidal force 
every time. It's huge. You may have seen it there in the multi-target section. For single target, just go with anything that's got decent single target damage. I go with the Pursuit of Dragon. It's cute. I have it account wide on all my characters. But there is, again, like a list. I test a load of them. And yeah, just any that's on top enough on this list is pretty good. And you can go with it. In terms of the companion gear, well, you can get upgraded versions of the what I have here from the new campaign. I just haven't bothered yet. Light of Xeraxis right here. Get this stuff. You will have to switch your crit severity over to some accuracy if you are to take that because this is currently giving me accuracy and combat advantage. Now we do have a perfect vision here, but you can switch things around and have this as a personal one. We'll talk about that in gear optimization. We have Minsk, Neverwinter Night, Batiri, the Alpha Compi, but you will definitely want to have the tamed Velociraptor when running again with optimized groups. So we just have this here to cap our power without the party. And then we have the Dark Dealer. You can have the Book Imp there as well. That might be easier to obtain than this. Now for multi-target, instead of the Bateri, I highly recommend the Spine Devil. The damage bonus from it is massive. You can check that out here. 11% of our damage in third place compared to all of our other abilities is the spine double its damage output is huge particularly on wizard if you can get your hands on it it's well worth putting it there for multi-target damage in single target you will definitely want the battery for the damage buff from there we jump to mounts in our current tab we have the vortex for multi-target damage but there's different ones you can use like even explosive equalizer will do the job i wouldn't worry too much about the multi-target mount power just don't use Pegasus, it got nerfed, and additionally, it's reduced by your critical avoidance. For single target, on the other hand, I like Golden Touch, but I have actually been running into issues where it ends up getting cancelled by my abilities and not dealing any damage. That's something I will check out later, but there's quite a few alternatives, and right now, which is bugged to be better than it should be, is Wicked Lich, as it can deal basically twice as much damage as it should but there's like Tunnel Vision, the Giant Toad, and there's also Big B's Hand. In terms of the equip power here, we have Mystic Aura for the ratings, but if you're in a group, you will want to have that Ferocity for a teeny bit more damage gain. It is not worth giving up the ratings for that as it gives a lot less damage as you might think it does. In the stable, we have just this setup here. You can see we got the Neverwinter Hand with those insignias, the Demon Wings, the Deadly Drider form, the Giant Space Hamster, and the Reanimated Chariot. There's a link in the video description below where you can find a lot of other mounts that will also give these bonuses, except Tacticians, and I will generally update that whenever we get new mounts, so you can look out for that, particularly if you're watching this video later down the road. Now, the insignias themselves, you can see again what types they are right there just by reading the names. But then we have the colors. The most important one is encounter power damage, crit severity. The rest don't matter, but I like to go movement speed, stamina regen, and astral diamond gain. From there, we go to our boons. In our campaigns tab, I recommend just getting all of these. On the master boons, after you get bloodlust and life lessons, try and get blessed advantage. Very good in a group. So is Blessed Resilience for your own survivability in a group. And make sure if you're running like Demon Web Pits, have Demonic Mastery. With the Guild Stronghold, we just have this here. Make sure to run Revive Sickness if you might die. Then we go to Consumables and Buffs. So in this build, we have Flask of Potency, Squash Shoop, Ratatouille Guild Food, Sun Lord's Gift Elixir. Now, as belt items, we do go with Dragonfire, uh, Stone of Health, and the perfect spider totem. This one coming from the North Dark Reaches campaign. A bit of a grind to get it though. If you don't have it, I wouldn't worry so much. And I would recommend then going with say, the golden cat here instead. So now we jump to group optimization. What do you want to change when you have the ability to get all of those buffs from the team? You should easily have all of these when in a min-maxed endgame group particularly for trials. Having all those auras, Tutor Portobello, Paladin Crit Aura, Tamed Raptor. So if we look at pack tactics, well, there's not much we can do. We could switch some skill insignias 
and that could just end up being messy. So we'll just ignore that for now. Tutor, that's an easy switch. There's a lot of things which we get 5% combat advantage from, namely our boots, our shirt here, and also that elixir. That gives us a lot of options. We can switch things to have there instead, like having a damage shirt if we're in Master Temple of the Spiders, this 8% damage one, or just a 3.5% damage one, or the boots going with 5% damage here. Now, if you're then running with Portobello, you could switch off Spider Totem or just not have it anyway, or you could go with the Vicious Dire Wolf in that slot to have a magnitude damage power. Then you might have the Tamed Velociraptor to get a ton of power. And so you want to make room for that. So we'd run like the healing mitts here. You could run the van bracers, but we'll go with the healing mitts. I'll give us a crit strike and some forte. And then we switch the compi over to the tamed raptor. And then we also want to go with the mount equip bonus ferocity, giving us that little bit of extra damage. Now for the paladin crit aura, we can switch our left ring. What this means here is we switch the critical strike ring over to the accuracy ring. I generally don't like it so much because it requires you to reserve your stamina, which is fine generally in single target boss fights, in multi-target maybe not so much. Will depend on who you're running with. But just simply switching this one here and then switching your let's say armor kits over can allow you to then have that room for the paladin crit aura and then also be able to switch off using the companion enhancement perfect vision. So here instead you can have armor break, you can have dulled senses, slowed reactions, and even vulnerability to support the team, allowing anybody who you attack, including yourself, to deal more damage above what you normally would when you just have your capped stats. Otherwise, you can switch to damage bonus weapons. Instead of switching that ring, you use the crit strike you get from the Paladin crit aura or those healing mitts to end up capping that without needing that from the perfect weapons. And then you can switch the Sun Lord's Gift Elixir over to Wildstorm Elixir. Also, you will want to switch some ratings. You'll get then the crit severity from there. So you could have that 90% and use then damage bonus weapons like again mirage solarum storm forge so on and so forth that is ultimately the entirety of the build again the document is linked below where you can follow all of the things i'm actually using there as well as with the video the video should help explain why and what i'm using as well a little bit more and hopefully overall that shows you how to play the wizard thaumaturg in single target and multi-target and you can do very very well you're one of the easiest classes to play that can perform very highly even with the recent adjustments and you should still have no problem maximizing all of your stats even with that loss of 10 percent crit severity particularly with all the best in slot gear pieces that you can get in the game right now once again a massive thank you to all of these channel members for their added support and we'll see you guys around goodbye for now